Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us for Hindustan Zinc Fourth Quarter 2019 results call. For our call today, we have with us Mr. Sunil Dugal, our CEO, and Mr. Swam Saurav, our acting CFO. Mr. Dugal will present an update on business performance, and Mr. Swam will take you through our financial performance. After which, we'll be happy to take your questions. Over to you, Mr. Dugal. Thank you, Preeti, and a warm welcome to all of you. We have delivered a good set of operating numbers in the fourth quarter despite a challenging start of the quarter. At the same time, we achieved few important milestones during the quarter. While silver production was strong, every quarter in the last financial year, our numbers in the fourth quarter were the best ever, again at 191 tons. At 679 tons for the year, we are now ninth largest silver producer in the world one notch up from last year, and the fastest growing silver company. With our plant ramp up, we expect to be among top five global silver producers in the next two years. We expect to touch 1.2 million ton run rate as we complete our ongoing mining expansion in the middle of this year, a feat we achieved momentarily in the month of March last year, showcasing the preparedness of our mines. This expansion was started in 2013, as you know, when our underground mining capacity was 300 kT per annum. And once it gets completed, our underground capacity will quadruple to 1.2 million ton per annum. We started conducting sustainability studies at our tailing dams in fiscal 2018 in consultation with leading global experts to reassess the structural integrity and have covered Rampura Gucha, Rajpura Gariba and Zawar mines so far. In the light of recent high impact failures of tailing dams in Brazil, as a proactive measure, we have decided to build all our future tailing dams as dry tailing to de-risk from dam failures. This will also conserve water and land requirement. The first such dry tailing plant will be completed in Zawar during next quarter. I am pleased to inform that we have received environment clearance to increase silver production at Pantranagar from 600 tons to 800 tons. We have returned significant cash to shareholders during the year in the form of a special interim dividend of rupees 20 per share in November last year, which is a dividend yield of over 7%. Considering this special dividend, the board has not proposed a final dividend for the year. To give you a market update now, zinc market supplies continue to remain very tight. Zinc price increased steadily throughout the quarter as LME inventories continue to be drawn down to historically low levels. Reported zinc exchange stocks are now estimated at two to three days of global consumption, which is much below the average of about 25 days. During the quarter, major floods were observed in Australia, disrupting zinc supply chain in the region. High-profile mining projects have had slower ramp-up than expected and supply fill-in has not been there, limiting the availability of the metal. Consumption remains positive in China, with increased focus on zinc-intensive sectors like infrastructure and construction and huge demand from the One Road, One Belt project, as well as zinc-intensive industries in emerging markets. With this background, we believe LME is expected to remain above $3,000 level in the coming months. Now, turning to our operating performance, we continue to report excellent progress in our mining projects with MIC production from underground mines increasing by 24% YOY to 245 KT during the quarter and growing by 29% to 936 KT for the year. It's gratifying to see Rampura Gucha operate at 4 million ton per annum run rate during the quarter, up from 3 million ton per annum a year ago, delivering about 60% higher production for the year. Sindeswar Khurd mine was at run rate of 5.6 million ton per annum as compared to 5 million ton a year ago. I am pleased to inform that Rajpura Dariba has crossed 1 million ton of 
annual production for the first time in its history and the mine operated at 1.3 million ton per annum run rate during the quarter. Both SK and RD mine achieved close to 20% higher ore production this year. Zawar mine is operating at about 3 million ton per annum run rate and for the year it has delivered over 30% higher production. Kayad on the other hand has been operating at its rated capacity of 1.2 million ton per annum for two years now. As I mentioned earlier, we had a challenging start of the quarter when we faced geotechnical issues that resulted in lower mine output in January and February, but we saw improvement in March and production rose sharply to exit at a run rate of 1.2 million ton per annum. Despite these challenges, our MIC production in quarter four was maintained compared to the previous quarter. However, we missed our annual guidance on MIC by a whisker. This year, our entire production came from underground mines, as you know. Unlike last year, when we operated via open cast operation also for the entire year. So while we have ramped up our underground mines over the course of the year, the current quarterly run rate of about 1 million ton, our total MIC production for the quarter and the year were marginally lower by 4 and 1% respectively from a year ago. We have set new records for integrated lead and silver production in this year. During the year, we took a conscious decision to retrofit the pyro smelter to produce more lead considering the higher availability of lead MIC and increasing lead content in the world. As a result, lead production increased by 18% to a record of 198 kT for the year. Silver, which is a byproduct of lead, also increased by 22% to a record 679 tons, supported by better grade and was in line with guidance provided at the beginning of the year. The total integrated metal production was for the year was lower by 7% for KT in line with MIC availability as underground mine ramped up to fill the vacuum from planned closure of open cast operation. While lead production rose, zinc production declined by 12% via wire to 696 KT. Integrated metal production during the quarter showed similar trend and was 6% lower sequentially and 15% lower from a year ago. Now an update on the progress of our expansion project. During the quarter, we commissioned the much-awaited crusher and production shaft at Sandesor Coat Mine, which is presently used for hauling waste and will be used for hauling from the mouth from the month of June. The mine achieved its highest ever total mine development of 5.1 km during the quarter. We expect to achieve our target production of 6 million tons this year with the commissioning of shaft and ongoing mine development. Rampura Gucha underground mine achieved a record total development of 7.3 km during the quarter. Production shaft along with crusher and conveyor system are expected to commission in September this year. The wrap up of mine to 4.5 million ton per annum will be as planned and we will continue to produce from decline and mid shaft loading system in the meantime. We commissioned the second phase fill plant at Rampura Gucha ahead of schedule and now the mine is self sufficient in phase fill to support ore production capacity. We'll be commissioning the second base fuel plant at Sindhesar Kud in the current quarter, which will make this mine also self-sufficient to support the mine capacity. These base fuel plants are not only technically superior to fill wires in underground mine, but also environment friendly as we use mining waste to fill wires, which otherwise would need to be stored in tailing dams. With this, we'll be sustainably using 60% of our tailings for void filling. Zawar achieved total mine production of 8.6 km, which is 15% higher from a year ago. We have also commissioned a new 2 million ton per annum mill at Zawar during the quarter. The payfield plant at Zawar Mines, which is expected to commission by middle of this financial year, will significantly increase the potential of doing pillar mining and recovering the left out high grade ore in those pillars, thus having high impact given relatively lower grade of the ore. At Rajpura Dariba mine, total mine development continues to increase rapidly and was at 2.1 km. We are also upgrading the existing production shaft from 0.7 
to 1.3 million ton per annum by end of this year to further debottleneck the mine along with the ongoing develop, decline development work. The work of new mill of 1.5 million ton per annum and the PSB plant is on with projected commissioning in a year's time. Finally, we expect to commission few more at Chanderia very soon now. This plant is a major sustainability and recovery initiative, as you know, which will produce 6.2 kT of zinc and lead metal, 32 ton of silver, and also generation and storage of xerocyte. As part of ongoing expansion capacity, we have debottlenecked our smelter to 1.07 million ton per annum. The increase in zinc production capacity has mainly come by cellulose efficiency and rosal throughput. The standalone lead production capacity has been achieved by debottlenecking of ISL smelter and Dariba lead plant. We are further increasing capacity through addition of new cells and improvement in cell house performance in zinc smelters and additional lead refinery capacity at Chandiria, which will increase total metal capacity to 1.13 million ton per annum by quarter three of this year. Now to pro provide production guidance for FY 2020, as I mentioned earlier, we expect to reach our design capacity of 1.2 million ton per annum by the exit of second quarter this year. We have debottlenecked our smelter to 1.07 million ton per annum and will further increase it to 1.13 million ton per annum also around the same time. We expect both MIC and metal production in FY20 to be above 1 million ton. This implies metal growth rate of about 12%. Silver production will continue to grow in double digits and expected to be in the range of 750 to 800, which is a natural growth looking at the growth we had last year. Now I will request Swayam to present financial performance. Thank you, Mr. Dugas, uh, and good afternoon to all. Total revenue from operations during the quarter was marginally lower by 1% sequentially at 5,491 crores. Uh, due to metal prices and scrap sales, offset by lower metal volume and rupee appreciation. Q4 revenue was down 13% from a year ago on account of lower metal prices and zinc volume, partly offset by higher lead and silver volume and rupee depreciation. For the full year, revenues were down by 4% to 21,118 crores as record lead and silver volume and rupee depreciation were more than offset by lower metal prices and lower zinc volume. Zinc cost of production before royalty declined marginally from previous quarters to 9.87 in Q4, primarily on account of decline in imported coal prices and also HSD as well as increase in linkage coal. However, the benefit of lower commodity prices were offset by higher mine development uh, expenses and lower volume. Asset credits were also marginally lower. As compared to a year ago, COP during the quarter was higher by 7% on account of higher mine development, higher employee cost, and also lower volume. COP benefited from higher credits, including asset, where price rose sharply. Uh, and, and for the year, COP increased by 4% to $1,016, primarily on account of higher mine development, steep increase in commodity prices, especially coal and diesel, lower volume, and employee costs partly offset by higher asset credits. COP and rupee was further affected by rupee depreciation. Against our linkage entitlement of over 40%, we received about 20% in the quarter, a significant improvement over single digit allocation till last quarter. EBITDA for the quarter was marginally lower by 2% sequentially to rupees 2,797 crores in line with revenue and flat expenses. As compared to a year ago, Lower revenue and higher cost of production resulted in EBITDA declining by 23% in Q4 and 13% for the full year. Net profit for the quarter was 2012 crores, down 9% sequentially and down 20% YOY, and full year net profits, profit was down by 14% to rupees 7,956 crores. Net profit for both the quarters and full year were helped by higher treasury income on account of mark to market gains resulting from decline in interest rates, even as corpus was lower on account of payment of special interim dividend in November last year. Depreciation and amortization, on the other hand, has trended up due to higher capitalization 
uh, and increase underground ore production, resulting in higher amortization. <coughs> Our gross investments were at 19,490 crore at the end of the quarter, while net investments were 16,953 crore due to temporary borrowings to pay dividends. In comparison, net cash and equivalents were 20,395 crores at the end of FY 2018. Now, looking at outlook, in this year, we will be completing several of our projects, including production shaft at Rampura, Gucha and Adi, paste fill plants at SK, Adi and Java, dry tailing plant at Jawar and SK, a fumer at Chanderia, and mill at RD. We expect project capex to be in the range of 350 to 400 million this year. Uh, looking forward, coal cost would improve, supported by better linkage, and uh, benign coal prices scenario. A productivity initiative will positively impact COP. We expect rupee to marginally depreciate, while commodities other than coal are anticipated to remain strong, driven by strong domestic consumption demand, and global price trends. During this year, we are planning faster mine development to strengthen our assurance of output capability and expect to double our value-add product portfolio, which is 13% current year to 25% uh, next year. Uh, overall, we expect zinc cost of production for full year to further improve and be below $1,000 per ton, uh, with volume growth being offset by accelerated mine development. Cost is expected to improve progressively over the quarters in line with volume ramp up and project commissioning, including ancillary plans. I would now request our CEO to sum up today's discussion. Thank you, Shoem. For the last two quarters reaching production run rate of 1 million ton, we expect to achieve design capacity of 1.2 million ton by middle of this year and touch this run rate by the fourth quarter. We delivered a record lead and silver production this year and expect to be in the top five in global silver ranking as we ramp up production over the next two years. We expect to deliver double digit growth in metal and for silver production in FY 2020. We think price holding up with an optimistic outlook. We should deliver record operating and financial performance this year. With this, I open the floor for questions. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the attached tone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Sumangal Nivetia from Kodak Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, so first question is with uh, respect to the cost guidance, which is around $1,000, uh, very similar to FY19. Now, despite the shaft commissioning in the first half uh, and also lower coal costs because we're expecting linkage uh, coal supply from Coal India and even uh, uh, seaborne prices are a bit lower. Uh, so uh, the cost guidance looks a bit uh, conservative. Uh, if you can just elaborate, what are the cost savings we expect after the shaft commissioning? So I think uh, you are uh, right that uh, we are a bit conservative on the cost guidance. So uh, uh, I mean uh, the fuel prices are better off now. So we are in a much better position. So and our base is reset. With the base reset, what I mean is that now the this was the first year when we didn't have the open cost, and uh, now from now on, whatever the growth, what we talk that. Uh, 20%, 30%, 35%, which has come in the MIC, will come from the underground mining and the base is So that means the volume will be there, uh, the fuel will be better, uh, shafts will get commissioned. Uh, one of the June, the hauling will start in SK. Uh, the hauling will also start uh, in third quarter in Rampura, Gucha. There could be some initial teething troubles here and there. But these are all the uh, advantages of cost. You are right, we are there and we are also focusing on efficiency uh, going forward, uh, be it a pull off the jumbo machines, the fill factors, uh, the cycle time. So all these themes are picked up this year. And uh, But one thing uh, we are trying to do this year is that we want to very aggressively push the development forward. So the development cost uh, could be higher this year So because we want to set up the mines for the future as, as, as it is ramping up. So it's a combination of all these factors and we said that 
the cost will be below thousand dollars. So somewhere somewhere below thousand dollars, it could be in the range of nine seventy five to thousand dollars. Bit conservative, but it's okay. This time we want to meet our numbers. Understood. Uh, on the volume part, sir, uh, we are guiding for one million ton. Uh, now both RA and SK should be commissioned the underground shaft uh, in one edge. Uh, so, I mean, uh, will there be any stoppage or something during commissioning? And uh, how will be one edge versus two edge? Will it be uh, significantly skewed towards two edge? No, I don't think uh, it's a it's a very even plan. If uh, you ask me, there's not much of the screw screw between H1 and H2 or quarter wise. Uh, as the shaft will get commission, of course the volume will go up. Uh, but uh, you also see that uh, we have touched around uh, uh, 5.3, 5.4 billion ton uh, from uh, from SK, and our license capacity is uh, 5 million ton, uh, 6 million ton. Uh, Rampura Gucha, we have a margin because 3.3 uh, last year. This year we are looking at 4.2, 4.3 million ton. So a lot of uptake will come from the shaft. Uh, so it will set us up, uh, and if we take a natural growth, which we have been giving from underground mine, so from a, from a production of 936 kt uh, last year to more than a million ton, we have we have said more than a million ton. So uh, I think uh, our our numbers will be almost there in the next year. Understood. So one just last bookkeeping question. If you could share the grade of zinc for FI19 versus FI18. Zinc and lead both. Uh, it is almost same. It is almost same. The overall grade was 7.7, 7.8. And next year also it is going to be almost the same because the way we have made our business plan, the, the contribution uh, from all the mines will be such that the grade will remain same. In uh, last year, uh, the grade has fallen by almost 1%. If you could break this into zinc and lead, uh, I would say the overall uh, the uh, grade uh, zinc and lead the average grade could be uh, 1.6, 1.7 percent lead, and uh, rest is uh, zinc. But it is normally, if you ask me in the ratio wise, it is 78 uh, to 22 percent exactly. The contribution of uh, MIC, the grade in the uh, in situ grade could be different, but the contribution uh, from zinc and lead in MIC term was 78 to 22 percent, and it is almost going to remain same. It rose up from 15, 16 percent to 22 percent. So that is why you must have seen that our growth on lead is higher, and that is why the silver is also higher. Of course, there are other silver initiatives like recovery and a uh, few other things, uh, but uh, uh, this was the basic contribution. 20 will also be uh, 78, 22 approximately, FI20? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Overall grade will be same and the contribution will also be similar. Got it. Uh, thanks and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ritesha from Investec Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, my first question is on the volume guidance that you indicated. Uh, I think for RAM, uh, you indicated 4.2 million tons this year. Earlier, uh, I think you indicated target production was 6 million tons for this year. So this 6 million tons, what you indicated, uh, I think you indicated 5 million tons for RAM. Was that the exit rate? No. The, the, uh, the design capacity is, 4.5 million ton from Rampura Gucha. Okay, and sir, what is the target for this year? Uh, 4.2. 4.2, and sir, same way for SK and RD? Uh, SK target is 6 million ton, and RD is uh, around 1.3, 1.4 million ton. But uh, we also require the environment clearance. The public hearing has happened, the presentation is happening, and then maybe another 2 3 months we will get the environment clearance for 2 million ton. So, uh, in RD mine, also, the, as you know, the debottlenecking is going on. We are debottlenecking the shaft uh, so that we can produce a better material. So the order we have already placed on ABD uh, for debottlenecking the shaft. And uh, ultimately, we want to produce 2 million ton. And the current uh, uh, capacity of the uh, mill is uh, around 0.91 million ton. And we are setting up the another mill uh, of 1.5 million ton uh, capacity which we, we feel we can de-bottleneck to 2 million ton. 
but the new mill mill design is such that it can give us additional recovery of 8 to 10%. Uh, sir, my second question is, uh, uh, our key leaders, basically, if one looks at uh, Rampura, Agucha, RD and Zabar, uh, they expire by 2030. Uh, so, sir, how, what is our strategy over here? Do we plan to ramp up the output uh, or are we factoring that we'll have the right of first refusal uh, going to 2030? Uh, so, how are you looking at the mine life? Uh, how are you planning the asset? No, the, uh, the, the right or first refusal is already there. And uh, I don't know how many of you have the information that the Niti Aayog had the very aggressive consultation with the various bodies and uh, very open uh, mind. Even the uh, even the mines which uh, which are not captive, which the license of which is which will expire in 2020, government is thinking whether to do something about that or not. So 2030 is quite far away. Uh, number one, number two, the right of first refusal is there. And I think the way the government is thinking to liberate the mining uh, on various aspects, uh, I don't think uh, uh, something will not happen by that time. Okay. Uh, okay. Sir, is there any scope of moving Gamsburg ore uh, to India? Uh, the reason specifically I'm asking is uh, you have higher manganese ore uh, at Gamsburg. Uh, global market's concentrated supply is, is in quite surplus. So is, is there a possibility uh, of something of this sort actually happening within uh, the Indian smelters utilize Gamsburg ore by blending it? So there is a various thinking going on. Uh, one is that we do not have extra capacity at Hindutan zinc to treat Amsburg ore. So we do not have any intention of doing that because we ourselves are doing our smelter debottlenecking as the uh, MIC capacity is going up. So we do not intend to bring uh, that ore here, but there is a various thinking which is going on. The thought also uh, crossed our mind whether we should put up a smelter uh, in India uh, at the port somewhere in Kakinada or in Gujarat and all that. So a lot of thought goes on, but we also have uh, in our mind that uh, we put up a smelter at Hemsburg itself. So we are in talks uh, with the South African government along. Their president uh, spent complete one day at Hemsburg uh, recently. And uh, we are trying to motivate government uh, to enter into some kind of partnership with you where they have declared uh, Hemsburg as this special economic zone because 250 uh, KTPA capacity we have set up and we have the intention to double this capacity going forward. Uh, and uh, thoroughly put up the smelter. So the plan, the first plan is to put up a smelter there, uh, get some incentives in terms of after putting up a special economic zone, and then maybe some power tariff debate if they can give up. So we are in talks with them, quite advanced, but the first intention and first preference is to put up the smelter at Amsterdam. Uh, sir, specifically to what you referred uh, on the recent Gamsburg visit, uh, in the presentation what we look at is the guidance what has been given by for 2022 is 1.533 million tons for Hindustan Zinc and Zinc International together. Uh, and what we uh, understand for Zinc International, it would be around uh, 500 kT. Uh, so then how this number stacks up if one had to break it up between Hindustan Zinc and Zinc International? So that's a very conservative estimate you might have looked at. So if you if you look at the present capacity which we have set up at Hemsburg and in the Sun Zinc, so after it matures in a year or so, uh, it will be 1.5 million ton. But we have the intention to double this capacity at Hemsburg in the next two years' time by putting up a concentrator and uh, you know uh, the expanding the mine. This is not a difficult mine, but we have learned now that uh, how to treat uh, that ore uh, at uh, concentrator. And uh, if that capacity 500 comes up and 1.2 uh, here uh, goes to 1.35, so it will be around 1.8, 1.9 million ton, I would say, two together. Okay, that helps. Sir, just last two questions. Uh, sir, you had indicated in the prior call that uh, we'll have a decision on fertilizer plant uh, post-March. So one is any update on that? And secondly, any regulatory update on SK North and SK South, which has been pending since quite some time? Yeah. So uh, first let me take a fertilizer. Uh, the update is that uh, the public hearing has taken place. The file has gone to MOEF. The presentation is going to take place. And after the presentation takes place, uh, the, the, we will get the environment clearance, maybe another three, four months time. Uh, in the meantime, uh, we, we consulted some experts uh, of fertilizer, uh, the word and all, 
and we have taken uh, some of them on our board as advisors. So they have, uh, you know, been able to uh, tell us that uh, how we can increase our capacity uh, with the almost same capex from 0 0.5 to 0 0.7, 0 0.75 million tonne. So with that, uh, the IRR goes up and this project becomes uh, more exciting. So we are redesigning that and at the same time when we get the environment clearance, so two together could become an exciting combination and then from there we will take on that uh, we, we start the work on the ground. Uh, this is this is the update here. And second thing uh, you asked on the SK North and SK South, we have been able to establish our rights at both the places. Uh, not that the government has given the clearance, uh, but uh, the revisionary authority in the mines ministry uh, decided in our favor and uh, uh, referred it back to the state government for a decision. Uh, not only SK South, SK North, one of the mine in the Bamniyankala also uh, is is in is in the same category. So there are three three licenses there. So with uh, the 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 discussion on the saved license. This also comes in the category of saved licenses, you know. There are around 500 saved licenses in India for which the decision has not been taken by the government. 26 licenses are there of Hindustan Zinc. Uh, some of these licenses, SK North, SK South and Barney are also there. Uh, but there are a large number of licenses. So uh, we told government that, uh, you know, the easiest way to open up the mind that the, where the exploration has already been done and the evidence is also there that the ore uh, is there. So the comment uh, is quite positive in that. So what uh, we think that as the new government comes, whosoever comes, the Goa mining opening, some of the saved licenses, 2020, maybe the differentiation between the public sector uh, and, and the government. So some of these things should go. Let us wait and see. But uh, I think uh, things should move in a positive direction. I am quite hopeful. Uh, sir, just last follow-up. So, sir, can SK North and SK South okay. offset uh, the lease expiries of 2030? Uh, last question, Priti. Okay. No, no, that is a that is a different thing. But I think in SK we have, the, if I am right, if I remember right, my license is there up to 2045 or something like that. SK I have a, a license for uh, much uh, much longer time, and uh, uh, and uh, this has got nothing to do with. Uh, it has got nothing to do with the SK North and SK South. RA license is there up to 2030. SK license is there up to 2043, 45, something like that. Perfect. Sir, sir, thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Participants are requested to limit their questions to two per participant. Time permitting, you may come back in the queue for a follow-up. The next question is from the line of Amit Dixit from Edelweiss. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for taking my question, sir. The first question is with respect to the difference in mined metal production and uh, refined metal production. So, mined metal production was 936 kT, while refined metal was 894. Uh, did we make any concentrate sales this year, or was it due to grades? I mean, I just wanted a little bit clarity on that. So, uh, very good question, I think. Uh, good observation. So, uh, you are right that uh, there is a difference between the MIC production and the finished wood was little more in this year. There are two, three reasons. Uh, year before, uh, we had a carried over inventory from the previous year to produce the more metal. And uh, this year, uh, there are two things which have happened. So, as I said that uh, March was at a, we produced MIC at a run rate of 1.2 million tons. So, 98 KT was MIC and 82, 83 KT was the FD production. So, there was the accretion to the inventory uh, which happened at the end of the year, which is carried over to uh, the current year. So, this is one reason. Another reason is that uh, we produce zinc oxide uh, in our uh, uh, fumer plant at uh, uh, Dariba and Murke treatment plant at uh, Debari. So, this zinc oxide inventory also piled up, which we normally use in the ISF furnace, pyro furnace at Chanderia to convert it into zinc. So, when the uh, lead inventory built up uh, beyond a point and we did not have the lead capacity and we debottlenecked and retrofitted it for the lead. Uh, we, we converted uh, this into lead uh, and uh, that is why we were able to make a much higher silver also. Uh, so this WIP has built up. This also gives us the opportunity. 
what we are also doing is that uh, we have learned from the bird that how they treat zinc oxide we are putting up a leaching facility both at chanderia and gariba and first at chanderia which is uh, about to get commissioned in the month of september or so where zinc oxide uh, will be leached and we produce the zinc sulfate and push it to the smelter where we convert it to, into the uh, finished metal so this zinc sulfate solution will be pushed to the existing uh, hydro smelt uh, hydro plants so we are uh, through the sellows route uh, will be able to convert this so apart from that there are other ancillary industries also we are putting up to look at the opportunity of some of the other free metals like cadmium uh, copper and other metals which can add value but this is one such opportunity which will build up over time uh, as i said and there will be additional opportunity to convert all these inventories uh, all these opportunities into the finished good so especially last year two things were there one was the zinc oxide inventory built up the second is the inventory also built up at the end of the quarter uh, the first two months of january and february were not good because of some uh, safety challenges because of the geotech issues one of the stock collapsed and if i may explain i am just trying to explain a little more uh, these challenges uh, will are going to be mitigated the similar challenges uh, during the year we also faced in rampura gucha but the commissioning of the paste fill plant second paste fill plant we are enough to handle uh, 5 million ton ore or produce 5 million ton ore from rampura gucha so our filling capacity and the voids are not there in the mine now as the paste fill plant is getting commissioned in uh, sk mine uh, the voids will be filled up and these surprises of the geotech will not come so it will be a more smooth and flow of ore and mig to this method as we will mature from now on uh, great so that was a very elaborate answer just a follow up question on this so your 1 million ton guidance that you have given for next year that is excluding this inventory or including this particular inventory benefit uh, i am not uh, going to explain much of the nitty gritty but just to correct you that i said plus 1 million ton okay fair enough the second question is on cost that was asked by this follow up that was asked by sumangal so uh, you know since we are commissioning our shaft in the h i mean the, towards h2 and there are number of other things that are happening in h2 so is it uh, kind of you know uh, logical to assume that the 1000 uh, 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 guidance that you have given uh, there will be a little bit of lumpiness so h1 would uh, see higher cost while h2 cost would normalize towards let us say 950 kind of levels is it a fair assumption yeah absolutely you are absolutely right uh, Okay thank you sir I have some more questions but I'll get back in the queue thank you thank you the next question is from the line of Indrajit Agarwal from Goldman Sachs please go ahead uh thank you sir i have a couple of questions uh, first uh, on the global zinc uh, balance that you see the tcs that have been negotiated earlier this year have been much higher than the last year and as a result we have seen some smelters talking about reopening or expanding capacity do you think that tilts the balance more towards a uh, higher surplus uh, than what we had expected earlier this is all a speculative market and uh, the basic fundamental which i have always emphasized i and i keep emphasizing that there are no stocks in the exchanges so this is the uh, better thing to assume so speculation and the long term tcs uh, the people assume certain things so there is a deficit i would say till 2020 which will exist uh, and we have also seen that uh, some events this is we are sitting on the edge you know a small event like uh, australia it happened it impacted the aluminum for 3 months so it started venting uh, going up and uh, similarly the projects which are in the pipeline have not delivered to the extent they were desired or they talked to deliver sure, uh, that's it uh, and my second question is uh, on uh, hindustan thing in particular uh, what is the update on our uh, next phase of growth like from 1.2 to 1.35 and 1.5 subsequently uh, uh, how are we looking at it in timelines that you can provide so as i explained we are doing a feasibility study with the uh, global partners uh, australian mining uh, company has conducted a pre feasibility study of what can we do going forward because there is a descent rate other safety issues uh, looking at the ore body r and r addition so we still are on the blackboard and planning how this will come up but there are opportunities around 
one of the opportunity i would say is that beyond 1.2 definitely is the bamnia kala bamnia kala lease has been renewed and the drilling is going on and i expect that we should start developing the mine in the next one year time and one year after that this mine could be operative when this mine op becomes operative uh, it definitely uh, gives us the opportunity of 50 kt of metal so similar to this there are other opportunities we are looking at and still we have to close uh, our plan but it will take certainly more time uh, but this opportunity what i am talking in bamnia gala it, it's already on Sure, that is. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Due to time constraints, we will take the last question from the line of Sanjay Jain from Motila Oswal Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thanks for taking my question. Uh, just one question: What is the capex we have incurred uh, during this year, and what is the guidance for FY20? Uh, total capex. Uh, total capex incurred in FY19 is about 330 million. And the guidance for next year is twenty fifty four million. Sorry, I missed here five twenty. The voice. Three hundred fifty to three hundred fifty to four hundred million. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks very much. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Pradeep Dubey for closing comments.